So we're moving on and we have a, a visitor from across the, the city of it is Rita Fagan. Rita uh, is a community activist and she's for Communities Against Cuts, which is a very relevant topic at the moment. And Rita is going to outline her media experiences and the future plans for her group and project. Okay. Do you need anything? Are you okay here? No. You're I okay here. Okay. That's kind. Okay, I have you. a sore throat, <coughs> so I might be able to talk that long. But however, thanks very much for getting me across to Liffey. And it was great facilities there are over here in Kula. It's water. I don't know that I'm going to be talking to what he's at to say, and I would be, but congratulations uh, for the work that Jack has done in building the media from the grassroots. And um, I suppose that yesterday morning when I woke up and I was listening to the radio, and uh, Christine Lagarde was, uh, had come to Ireland and they were talking about, you know, how great the Irish people are. You know, Dara, we're paying, we're paying our bills and uh, we're setting the model for Europe. She was the first bit I heard. The second one was, um, what you call him, Leo Varadkar, telling us, you know, Dara, look, people have money. They have to pay their bills. We have to pay our bills. And the third person, by the time I was nearly finishing on out the door, was noon and saying, look, people have... Um, they have sky in their bedrooms and, you know, they have a thousand pounds. And really what they want us to do is live without the lights, live without heat and just, just go back to, to basics. So that's the mainstream media and that's what we're hearing every day. And that's, that's the stories we hear that, you know, life is going on. But the story of the community and voluntary sector at the moment really isn't getting out there. And I don't know if many in this room knows what's actually happening on the ground in communities, rural and Ireland, and the whole of Ireland, travellers, working class communities like Coolock and the spaces where we are. I'm over in the Canals communities and I'm based in St Michael's Estate. And I've been a community development worker on the ground there for 25 years. And the poverty, uh, that it just hasn't only happened today. There's always been poverty, there's always been a people who live below the level and, and they've always struggled and, uh, and that's oppression and it's wrong and it's wrong and it's wrong that we should have people living in that. But anyway, in the last five years communities in Ireland have experienced huge parts from the cuts and just taking the canals communities, we lost the regional youth service so you still have your regional youth service over here so I don't know for how long. We lost our intercultural centre, which was really important for the different communities to have come to live in the Canals community. We've lost that just there in September. We've lost three family support workers to based in the flat complexes of Dolphin House, Fatima and St Michael's Estate. We've lost the Music for Me programme cut by the CDYSP that gave children, 200, 200 children, children that don't have access to music or those through their after schools, they've cut that, uh, they've cut the CE schemes, um, they've closed at a national level 165 community development projects at a national level. Uh, in the last weeks they have really come after youth, so youth services are just being cut. In terms of the regenerations of Limerick, of Michaels, of Dolphin, of all that, O'Devany Gardens uh, uh, regeneration is not going ahead. The people of Odenny Gardens are being put to the winds now. The people in St Michael's Estate, who have, up to last week, it's taken 15 years, uh, up to last week, to just to, to demolish the site. It has taken some to four plans on St Michael's Estate, that the people's hopes and dreams have been let down over four times. But well, how does that story get out there? How do them stories of injustice, and, and the breaking up of the infrastructure of community get out there. And there are questions I have for the community media. How do you build a voice? In St Michael's Estate, uh, because uh, Bernard McNamara pulled out from the five communities, that was oh, Devony Gardens, Dominic Street, Michael's Estate, uh, Sean McDermott Street and uh, Infirmary Road, all communities very, very disadvantaged. Uh, the only way we could fight back was with a media strategy. Now, we didn't have any of those skills. 
But what we did have was community development and what we did have was tenants, leaders who, whose voices had been developed to fight at their level around challenging the stay about um, what was happening in their communities. And we did get some media training. So I think media literacy is very, very important. And what we got was some understanding of how uh, the media, the big media, the media, the dominant media, the media controlled by big business and, and a media of the state that's supposed to be about its people, how it works, because working class voices don't get onto that media. But people like Vincent Brown, who are patrons and near and all those, you know, have helped to get the voice of the injustice that happened, say, Michael's estate to Limerick uh, and to those, um, those communities out there. Now, it is hard, but what we did learn, as I have learned in the arts world, you know, that you might make art, but there are curators and there are technicians and there are all those kind of things. So that we learned about being sources for, um, being sources for journalists and um, we learned how to, as I said, uh, learn how to actually speak on programmes. So we got a little bit of training around speaking and about all you need. You, like I could go on forever and all kinds of things, but getting your message very clear. So I think communities have to be taught how to get their message and get it very clear and to stay on their message. And that literacy uh, and development devices of people who are the experts of the issues, people who experience poverty are the experts of poverty, people who live in a state of abuse, because I do believe, like the Magdalens and like the people who've gone before that, that the state in the future will have to come back and apologise to the kind of conditions where storage comes up through your bat when you're in it, where you have damp coming down through the roofs, all those things, the state will have to come back and say, look, we were unjust, uh, we never said it was wrong. But what we as communities have to do is develop our voices more. We have to get out there, we have to have opportunities of, of, of media. We've got to build, like himself, their, uh, community papers, um, community voice. Uh, get access to bigger media and we, we, it's just how does that story get out there tomorrow a story is going to hit the papers I was listening this morning that there are 68 billionaires in Ireland 68 billionaires right and in the last year there's 300 billionaires who have made money in the last year while our people our old people are being asked to uh, pay on their medical because they get their um, my mum had to pay 19 euro day last week over our pension just on our medication they have cut back on old people's telephone bills and those kind of things uh, so that, what I'm trying to say is them stories aren't getting out there and you who are media have also a responsibility to be able to say it's wrong because it is wrong it's wrong that we have two islands and that we do have to use our voice. So, so media literacy is one. Use, use acting as well as change makers uh, of talking about the injustice and of giving representation. As I say, I have a sore throat and I'm, I'm not feeling that great other I've yet to more. So it's really up to all of us to do it together, to fight injustice and, and, and to do it as best we can. So for me, it's la lucha continua, because the struggle is hard and the struggle is long, and we have to keep doing it, whether we lose our energy or not. All right? Yeah.